David speaking here in Psalms, he says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Well, shucks. I ain't always been good at that part. I know Sister Crystal's got it in spades. Just ask her husband. Uh, I love Souls Harbor. Could we reel in here? The honesty is in the next part. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Oh, Lord. Half the time I'm crying because I didn't obey that first line. I wasn't, wait, I wasn't waiting patiently. You know, I could wrap this up right now. We can go home, and that's enough preaching right there. If some of us who just learned to wait on God or follow his rules or follow his plans, we could eliminate that crying all the time part. But the psalmist is real because he says that not waiting part. It's kind of funny what he's talking about. The waiting part wasn't that he did it right. It was because they did it wrong because look what he's getting pulled out of. Listen, you got to read it, folks. And he brought me up also out of a horrible pit. That pit you got yourself in because you didn't wait. You weren't waiting because you were right with God. You was waiting because God and the situations you made got you in a situation. I got any real people know you put yourself in a situation. Well, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit. That's the situation that I put myself in. But if you read deeply, he says something else out of the miry clay. Because we're all born in sin and shape and iniquity. We all got to face what we really are. He covers both of them. The messes I make, the messes that fall in humanity. We, we all need saved from sin. In the depth of David's simple little psalm here, it's pretty deep. And set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings. And he have put a new song in my mouth. And if we would just... The problem is we get excited about the wrong songs. We put a new song in my mouth and even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear. Now, If you're doing stuff that the Bible clearly calls sin, you don't reverence God. You're immoral. And we're not allowed to say that today because I hurt someone's feelings. I'd rather hurt your feelings now than see you lost forever. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. You don't just live right for yourself. You live right because of what you show other people. I'm going to let you be seated. I have more to read, but let's place our Bibles down. And we only got a few moments together this morning. And I'm just, I'm just going, I'm just going to be pastor. I, I'll tell you what, I, we got such a wonderful church of people. You guys are, I love preparing for you. No matter how sick I feel, what I'm dealing with my body, what's going on, I am so thankful that I get to spend time preparing stuff like this for great people like you. Amen. Every one of your faces goes through my mind. Chris and Hannah, five o'clock this morning, you was probably dead asleep, but this man is praying for both of you. Larry and Nancy too. Every one of you. I was sitting there thinking, just chuckling, devil, you're a liar. Sister Carol cares about me. Devil, don't even come around here. I got good friends like Carl and Brother Terry, and yes. great men of God. And I got a wonderful set of saints, Sister Loretta calling and praying, Sister Verdell praying for me. 
I love preparing for you folks. Yes, Jesus. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Jesus, we love you. We need you today. Lord, I ask that you help me bring forth this thought to help somebody, encourage somebody, maybe even correct somebody to get someone on that straight and narrow way. God, help someone not only save their soul from eternity, but to save this life, God, from turmoil, trouble, and pain. Help us to rise above the situations and circumstances that we face because of bad decisions and because of our clay. We got bad decisions and bad clay, God. We need your help. We trust you. We believe in you and we rely upon you. And everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you. Be seated. Now, I don't know what they're going to title this thing. I gave them a couple of titles this morning. Okay. That works for me. It may change. I don't know fully how this is going to go. You know. Genesis 37, we interrupt an absolutely an amazing story. And we're only going to cover a little bit of his life. But it's, it's beautiful. And I don't know how much I'll be able to get into this. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that, their father loved him more than all his brethren. They hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And I'll be honest with you. Like a fool, he told it to some people. He told it to the people that disliked him. And they hate him yet the more. Not everybody's going to be for you. That's right. Not even those close to you have your best interests in mind. Not even those that are supposed to will always have your best interest in mind. If you've been through a divorce or you've been jilted or you've been done, welcome to the miry clay. That's people. If people, if you're with someone that's just flat gonna, not going to live for God, if they won't live for their creator, what do you think they're going to live for you for? Don't get mad at their clay if you can't manage to stay out of the pit. We have some responsibility. Anybody have any dreams? Well, I hope you do. Dreams, careers, jobs, just aspiring to something. That's life. That's, that's what gets us up in the morning. Well, I mean, we're more blessed than most people because 90% of the time, not recently, but we get some just good old Arizona sunshine. And I got friends, I got a friend that posted, I think, six degrees this morning. I was like, yeah, I'm smarter than you. I moved. <laughs> Either grow hair all over your body or move. I'm not a bear. I don't, I, I'm not going to hibernate and I can't handle all that snow. I'm going to go where it's warm. I got desires for doing something greater with my life than just existing for a few years and grinding at the mill of the world and exiting. I've, I've, I've got things I want to, I want my life to mean something. God wants your life to mean something. If you're fearfully and wonderfully made, that means you're made for a purpose. Anybody in here sitting on a chair? That was a tough one. That was a tough one, wasn't it? That chair was made on purpose for a purpose. That's right. It's made for you to sit on. There's a designer behind it. And if we could see that in a chair, how much more for ourselves? There's a designer behind your life, behind you and how you're made and intricately put together. Why would you settle? John, in his descriptiveness of, of the Lord, reiterated 
what Jesus said in John 10, 9 and 11 through 11. He said, I am the door. Are you listening? By me, if any man enter and he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to seal and to kill and to destroy. Are you listening? I am come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Amen. Yeah. That's my Lord right there. That's my Lord. He, man, I, I serve a great God. Paul makes a statement and he reiterates, and you have to understand his background and what he's gone, gone through and what he's overcome. He makes a statement in chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, He's giving us some advice here. Now, I know it's hard to get our clay to want to do right, but there's a reward in it. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Well, that doesn't sound like fun. Well, yeah, it's called denying yourself, but the rewards are amazing. Because Paul did an about face and turned his life around. We read about him today. He's historic. He's got kind of an awesome story. He's got the greatest 180 just about you can read in the Bible. We got some things that we have to deal with. We may have to navigate some pits, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. But God's promises are sure. If we will keep our way clean, Paul's saying, get your way clean, and a pit is no problem. That's right. That's right. Amen. Joseph's story is one full of pain. But it's that pain that reveals Joseph's integrity and brings about God's plan. And that's the point. We have to learn. Remaining godly in ungodly circumstances, staying faithful in frightening situations. That's, that's what it's, it's about. In Genesis 37, it says that it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors. That's the first thing the enemy wants to do. It wants to get your daddy's markings off of you. He wants to strip you. Mm-hmm. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty and there was no water in it. His brothers did that to him. Verse, 30, uh, verse 29 of that same chapter. It says, and Reuben returned unto the pit. Listen to me. It's not deep. It's not revelatory, but it's easily missed. And Joseph was not in the pit. And he tore his clothes. Now, I don't have time to get into the tearing clothes part, but that's, that's, I'm fixing to preach on that. Now, if you fast forward a whole bunch of time, a whole bunch of events, and get to Genesis 50, Joseph is speaking, the same one that was thrown in the pit, that rumor had came to find, and he wasn't in the pit. But as for you, talking to the enemy, Talking to a brother. Oh, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good. I, I, I can't just read through that. When you get to the place that you can trust God, even though people mistreat you, you can go someplace. When you, when you can stop blaming God for what people do, you're going places. Yeah. Oh, man, I, I know I, did, I didn't say that with enough whatever it needed. When you can trust God knows better than you, and he will allow someone to hurt you, because in the long run, he knows it will help you. Some of us learned how to treat people because you was mistreated. Y'all better recognize that in this house. Man, we got foster parents in here. 
We got adopted folks in here. We got people here that were left as teenagers alone and unwanted and other people took them in. All that says is life can hand you a whole bunch of mess, but there's people that can step up and become the miracle. Some people may need it for evil, but God got a plan. In fact, Joseph takes it farther. And I want you to catch this for your own life. You're not insignificant. You don't sit here and and not matter. You matter. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. I'm here to tell someone, your life can make a difference to a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. So when we read the story of Joseph, there are some things that cannot be denied because the scripture makes it clear that God spoke to Joseph in his dreams. And we got to handle, we got to navigate some of this. Let's get your mind wrapped around it. Joseph was chosen by God. Joseph was anointed by God. Joseph had a destiny promised to him by God through his dreams. Joseph was not only favored by his father, he was favored by God. Now, see, sometimes we start thinking, oh, I got an anointing. We think all of a sudden that that sets before us a a clear path. That's always so. But we can deduce that God was with Joseph and that God has a plan. Joseph was given specific dreams by God. And thankfully, Joseph believed those dreams for his life. Sounds like a winning combination. Sounds like, hey, this is pretty good. And judging from the criteria criteria that we would place on it, looks like Joseph had it made. Favorite son, dreams from God, look out. He loved God and God loved him, right? How do I say it? Should be all rainbows and roses? Got the Midas touch, silver spoon in his mouth, no problems. But between Genesis 37 and Genesis 50, we find out that this same Joseph who had everything going for him, who was favored by God, who, who was favored by his earthly father, who had all these advantages, found himself in some pretty bad places. That messes with us. You're at home and you're doing what you do as a husband or a housewife, as a child. And when it all falls, it flies in your face. When you realize all this stuff going for you doesn't eliminate problems in your life. We have a problem with that. It messes with us. Because we as people strive so hard to avoid problems. Hopefully every one of us drove here with a jack in your car. You don't want problems, but you're ready. Some of you drove here, you didn't plan on spending any money, but you have your wallet. Got that credit card, got your insurance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't want the problem. You don't want to have to use your insurance card, but you got it. If God has given us promises and he's given us dreams and established hopes, so we, we, we tend to get this, I got this. Come on, never, man, it's a good day to I got this. You know, look, check, you're looking in the mirror, everything's looking good, everything's tight, everything's like you wanted it. You look down in the shoes or just in the, the tie or the dress or, you know, and the, the house is clean and the car is clean and got gas in it and fridge. Yeah, life's good. I'm blessed. God's hands on me. We get that mental picture of what we think life and things should look like. And we do whatever we can to make sure that image in our mind, our head becomes a reality. We work hard for that. You hear what I'm saying? Look, if, if God promises you as a child or 
It promises you some things. You, you start doing your part. It's normal. In actuality, we set ourselves up to fail because you can spend your lifetime trying to create a reality out of mental images only to find out that what you picture and what God planned is two different things. I think I've said this before. And it, I don't know, remember who the writer was. I think it was Garth Brooks who sang the song about, I thank God for unanswered prayer. Put all that effort forth to try to help God bring to pass what you think that life should look like. And you're fighting so hard for something that you end up actually fighting against God the whole time because what you had in mind and what he has in mind are two different things. What you think is a successful life is a complete failure in God's eyes. Matthew 16, 26 says, For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? So God looks at things different than you and I. You look at right now, but he sees the end from the beginning. One day, because of circumstances, Joseph found himself in a pit. He found himself in a hole. Not exactly made the radar of his dreams. Didn't exactly... Look like the picture of success that he had, right? But understand this one thing today, that Joseph's dad had sent him to do what he wanted him to do. He was obeying what his father had instructed him. And he ran into a stranger in the field, and the stranger even directed, no, your brothers are over here. So he's following and doing everything appropriately in his life, how things were going. Joseph's angry brothers saw him and found him. And when they did, we know it was his brothers that threw him in the pit. Joseph's life was being directed by all these outside circumstances, by all these other people. And I'm pretty sure when his own brethren laid their hands on him, he was pretty worried that, oh, no. These guys just derailed God's plan for my life. This situation is going to end all the promises that God has for me. These people have just set, upset God's apple cart, and now the dreams aren't going to happen. Nothing's going to go my way. These people, my brethren, have just ruined my life. Come on. Come on, you've been so mad. Some of you have been so upset. You're ruining my life. You about lose it when the finances aren't there or the job quits or fails or health leaves you. Whatever circumstance is your pit, you look at that. How? What are you doing? You're ruining what God's trying to do. I'd like to say that the enemy had Joseph right where God wanted him. The enemy, Joseph, right where God wanted him. And I, I want to stop here for just a minute and tell you, if somebody told you when you become a Christian that all your problems would be over and that you would never hurt again, that you'd never cry again, that you'd never suffer, that you'd never be hurt or ever get sick, they lied to you. Let me tell you about trouble. The Bible is clear when it comes to trouble. There will be many that trouble you. That's the scripture. Your life is a few days and full of trouble. Because understand, we may create problems, but just being clay has problems. Remember David's song. But also the Lord is an ever-present help in trouble. If he's an ever-present help in trouble, means he understands we're going to have can we say trouble? The psalmist goes on to say in Psalms 34 and 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. 
The point I'm trying to make is that Christians, people, we, we're going to have problems and you're going to get into trouble, but God can deliver you out of the trouble. You're still going to get sick. You're still going to lose jobs. You're still going to fail tests. You're still, you're still going to have broken hearts. You're, we still die. We still get in situations we shouldn't. We still find ourselves in situations that we don't want to be in. And find ourselves in situations we never dreamed we'd. Sometimes you fall in. Sometimes you jump in. And sometimes you're pushed in. <laughs> well, funny how we like that one, but that one happens way less than the ones that we jump in. But we didn't get the reaction out of that jump in one because we always like to blame something outside of us. Hey, hey, I, 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 I told a young gal a couple years back. She's complaining about the car she was driving, the apartment they was living in and all this kind of stuff. She's just a young girl. And I said, well, did he have a house and a car before you, before you guys got hooked up? No. <laughs> Y'all need to listen to me. If you want something in life, don't marry that joker till he's planning to get there. Oh, let me help you. There's a little girl sitting in the back of this church right now. She wanted a Nissan Rogue. I'm cool with that. She was driving a Chevy Malibu, and that thing was a dog. That thing, I don't know. How, we put more money just trying to keep that thing on the road. I'm not knocking any type of brand. So we go to get her this Nissan Rogue, and she gets in the first one. Yeehaw! She wants it. She's driving around the car with Mama in it. I'm going, it's the first one you got in. So I'm leaving. I'm like, I've owned a few vehicles. I've had more vehicles than she's had hot dinners. I'm going to look around. I walk around, and I look. I look at the paint job on this one over here. Got a pearl white paint job on it. All the bells and whistles. And so, okay, I go back and I find them tooling around, just driving around. She sold. I was like, well, that's cool. But didn't you say something about a pearl paint job sometime back? Well, yeah, but so come over here. <gasps> some of you, you need a pastor whether you like it or not. The problem with some of you is the moment I, the moment I try to put, I want this one. You don't even want to check. You don't even want to. No, I can't. But thank God she was like, what? 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 The one with the pearl paint jars in the parking lot right now. Just because she took the time, he might know something. Hello. You need to listen a little bit. You, you need to understand that the church and the pastor is not trying to hurt you. It's trying to save you some hurt. Life is already full of trouble. You might want to listen to some people. You might want to listen. To, you know, I uh, you know that may you may like that guy, but if he ain't got his act together by this time, he's probably not gonna. If she can, she's probably never gonna. Especially if they won't submit to the very plans of God. If God can't change them, who do you think you are? <laughs> Quit looking around the room. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to me. This, I earned this. Yeah, I deserve it. I did a lot of dumb stuff. I didn't want to wait. I thought I knew. I didn't see God. You know what the Bible says? It's better to not vow than to vow, vow, and break it because once you make the commitment to vow, you need to hold to it. Look, if you're uncomfortable in here with this kind of teaching, then you're a dishonest person. 
you should, why do you require so much for you, but not require the same of you? Again, sometimes you fall in. Sometimes you jump in and sometimes you're pushed in. It doesn't matter what you're going to find yourself in. <laughs> Save yourself as much trouble as possible. The Bible says there's safety in a multitude of wise counsel. Look, if you want wise counsel, don't go to your friends. I'm going to say something I haven't said in a long time. Some of you, I, I see some of your faces are really sitting there going, a thousand yard stare because you're starting to realize I wasn't pushed. Yeah. That's funny. Let me tell you the benefit of a pastor, a real one. He's going to tell you what's best for you. Not what you want to hear, not what somebody else wants you to do, but what's best for you. And they know it's going to be comfortable. It may require something of you, but that requirement of you is going to be a whole lot less than the pain is going to require of you later if you don't listen. We, we got some smart people around here. You got a problem with a vehicle, I can point you to some people. If your back hurts, I can point you to somebody. If you, if you need some, there's because they've learned. Can I help you? Don't have to go through life and learn. You don't have to hit every bump because you want to learn it. You don't have to bang your head because you haven't learned how to duck. Let someone tell you, you need to duck there. You need to. If, hey, look, if you're talking about getting married, you better talk to some married folks. Don't think, oh, no, not you. Yeah, you. Hey, kids. You, 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 you have every reason to be the most successful because we've already made all the mistakes we can keep you from, but you got to be willing to listen. <laughs> you know why they're saying amen? That's enforced by the mistakes. God intended you to have a church body. Hey girls. You got a guy you like? Run and pass some of the men here and listen to their honest opinion. What, you can't keep a job? That's a bad sign. He don't, he don't talk to mom good or dad good? Wait a minute, she, she does what? Well, you're judging people. Lord God, yes. What, you don't think judging is biblical? If I walk up to a, to, a, to a lemon tree and there's no lemons on it, is it a good lemon tree? I need some fruit. Judge ye a righteous judgment. Listen, listen. People are afraid of Matthew 7, or judge not lest you be judged. All that saying is, listen, live according to how you judge or you're a hypocrite. Don't be afraid of that. Amen. Go ahead and judge Brother Terry about work. He works. He's going to look at other men. Does he work? Why? Because we know men need to work. Is that hypocritical? Is that judgmental? Yes. It is. It's supposed to be. If I take prime rib, I want to say broccoli, but that'll turn everybody up. I like okay, sauteed Brussels sprouts. Okay, we'll just leave the veggies off. <laughs> Smothered mashed potatoes or whatever. And I set that in front of you. That's the will of God. <laughs> it looked right. I turn around and put a bowl of oatmeal in front of you. What you talking about, Willis? I 
I'll tell you right now, you're only going to eat that big old steak and then mashed potatoes for so long, you're going to turn around and the doctor's going to tell you, you need to mix in some of them oats. <laughs> you know why we're saying yeah? Well, we can't tell you all the details of why we know. Diet matters. I don't know how we got off on all that. I'm just trying to help you. Well, God, you've got enough trouble in this world without creating your own problems. I need God. So regardless of how you got there or why you're there, a pit is a pit. And we're already here and we're dealing with it today. And if you stay there, you're going to die. You, you can be cast into a pit, but you don't have to stay there. You can get pushed into a pit. You don't have to accept that. You can get shoved there. You can trip there. You can fall there. God could lead you there. But God and you need to decide you're not staying there. Dreams die in the pit. Ministries die in the pit. Relationships die in the pit. Giftings, callings, marriages will die in a pit. Now it could be said Reuben was the leader. He was the eldest. So he was responsible for Joseph being in the pit. Now, we like to point to that reason rather than the remedy. You think you're okay staying in the pit if you can point, Reuben put me here. I'm here because of this. I, I, I'm here because my ex cheated on me. I'm here because my mom and dad didn't love me. I'm here because we spend a lot of energy on blaming. We want to blame the reason. In, in fact, I've witnessed people waste most of their lives blaming instead of becoming. I've watched people waste their lives pursuing revenge rather than pursuing the remedy. We focus on the pits of the past instead of pursuing a future. We settle for the pit. In fact, some of you mingle around and decorate your pit. You're, you're trying to, you're, you're making the pit a place to stay. Instead of like, you know, this is a mistake. This, this this isn't where I want to be. I, 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 oh, I'm going to say something about. We settle for pits. Our pits become our paradigm. And we act like God doesn't care or God missed us or God doesn't care what happens to us. And that's why some of us take so long to progress or you are stuck in the same place for so long. Until you quit focusing on why instead of how, you're going to stay in your pit. But granted, it was Reuben and his brothers and their hatred that put Joseph in the pit. They threw Joseph in the pit. We don't know what happened. Whatever it was, this is what we do know. Stay with me. Reuben was there when Joseph was thrown in the pit. But Reuben wasn't there when he was lifted out. The enemy, again, had Joseph right where God wanted him. See, the problem with some of you, you just... You just can't get God involved on a Sunday. You need to start getting him involved every day. You come and go and you don't take it serious. You turn around one minute, you come in and pastor this and pastor that. I don't see you for a couple. You come. My message today really is the enemy had Joseph right where God wanted him. The enemy has you right where God wants you. But the problem is, is you got to let God lead you now. Because God's plans are not subject to the enemy's devices. God's plans are not derailed when the enemy attacks. You need to hear me. You need to hear me. I know. You, I know you think I'm being uh, counterintuitive here, or I'm being hypocritical, or I'm I'm I'm, I'm 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 conflicting my subjects here. But listen to me. 
a bad day does not derail God's desires for you. Now, let me prove this, because the point is, Reuben was surprised. Reuben was shocked. The one responsible for Joseph being in the pit that saw him go in the pit, Reuben was sure Joseph would still be in the pit. Are you, are you hearing me? Because I'm, I'm about to hand you something. Reuben, like your enemy, came looking for Joseph in the pit, and that's where he expects him to stay. Your enemy expects you to stay there. Your enemy expects you to stay addicted and, and stuck in these things. The, 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 the enemy showed up this morning and expected you to stay in that pit. Go to church, I don't care, but stay in that pit. Praise God. And God. But, but the enemy expects you to stay down. If you always do what you've always done, you're always going to get what you always got. If you're always willing to settle, then you're always going to have to settle. The problem is, are you okay with staying down? Are you okay with staying in the pit? Yeah, wait, Reuben saw him struggling, maybe even had a hand in it. I, I, I just, for some reason, see the older brother watching the younger one try to get their digs in because they outnumbered him. And I wonder, as those other brothers just manhandled him, Reuben standing there, if, 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 if Joseph in, in, in the hierarchy of looked at his older brother as they grabbed him and manhandled him and were throwing him, and it looked at Reuben and said, Hey, I looked up to you. I looked at you like a protector. You were my brother. <laughs> Reuben was there when he went down. Reuben was there when his life seemed to be ripped apart. But now old Reuben's looking into that same pit, expecting to see a pitiful Joseph full of fear and full of confusion and stretching and crying and begging to be delivered. Did you hear me? The enemy wants you to think he has all the power. See, the enemy today wants you to stay sitting in that same mental paradigm and life you've been living and wants you to stay in that same pit and wants to think that he, you to think he has all the power and you sit there consumed about how you ended up in the situation you're in today. Instead of being concerned about finding a way out, he wants you to sit there and think you're stuck. But the wonderful thing that this story teaches us is that Reuben came to find Joseph stuck. Joseph wasn't there. You need to start not being where the enemy expects you to be. You need us. I know there's people going through some stuff here today. I know it. And not only do I know it, it's obvious because I can see it on your face. I can, I can observe it in your life. I, I haven't lived as I'm heading to 60 really fast. I've lived a little bit. I know some of you young people think you know better, but you better turn around and do like the Bible says and honor the gray-headed, the agent. You better under, now, now I get it. Some people just don't qualify. But the Bible, even Paul said, you've observed the, my manner of my life. You need to observe people. If you want a godly life, my God, then you need to marry a godly person. If you want a godly home, then you need to act godly. You need to live godly, soberly. You need to live the Bible. All I have to do is to listen to what you say and what you talk about and watch the way you act. And it all tells me there are some things that people in here need to overcome. Listen, you can be healthy and be in a pit. Samson was in a pit. Samson had the power. To... You can be wealthy and be in a pit. Ananias and Sapphira. You can be wise and be in a pit. Look at Solomon. Listen, stop saying, we're not immune to pits. We're going to be, sometimes life's the pits. What did Irma Bombeck say? If the life's a bowl of cherries, why am I in a pit? Some of you don't even know who that is and it's okay. The problem is the pit's not the big deal. Your mentality and your attitude is. 
Oh, God, if you'd get an email on that one today and hear what I'm saying. Some of you wear your pits and problems like badges of honor. You're addicted to your pit. You, 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 you think that every time you come to church and every time you got to, this is the problem I got. No, it isn't. It's the pit you chose to stay in. Some of you coddle those pits. You defend them and you foolishly fall in love with them. Love's a verb. It's an action. Love don't pay the rent. You, if they're not everything on your list, and you better have a list. Don't marry without a list. Look, if you want a guy with blue eyes, he ain't got blue eyes. Don't marry the guy. You roll over and see hazel eyes or green eyes, your love might get paralyzed. You got a guy that's got to have a certain kind of income and all of a sudden he doesn't, or you got a lady that's got to have a certain kind of looks that all of a sudden we're counseling all the time. Try to you commit to your vow and said, why don't you make your list and stick to your list? Or well, you're going to settle for a paint job you didn't want. She wanted that pearl paint job. She was ready to go out. I can't remember what the other color was. It wasn't pearl. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you'll, you can find yourself in a pit. But don't make it a lifestyle. Right. Stop coddling the pit. Don't get mad. You, tend to, you want to get mad at me right now because I'm telling you there is a way out of that pit. The problem is, is you could be the reason you're in the pit. That's what makes us mad because then it takes away our ability to blame outside. If you got enough money to pay your bills but can't pay your bills, that's because you got a problem. Don't blame the fact you got you don't have enough money. You're spending it in the wrong places. If every month you're having to ask for help, you're the problem, not the money. If your car keeps breaking down because you're hot dog in it, there's a problem isn't in the car. Are you helping me? Are you hearing me? Addictions, bad choices, mistakes, attitudes, and failures. We don't need to analyze if you were pushed, you fell, you were tripped. Let's just get to that. You're in a pit. A pit is just, let me simplify this to help you. Another way of saying, I'm lower than I've ever been. Or I'm not where I thought I should be. Can, can, can we do that today? Anybody ever have anybody help you out of a pit? They watched you struggle and helped you out. They step back and saw your pain. They observe you scratching and clawing and trying to climb your way out. And, yeah, I'm in a pit. I, I come to tell somebody today, it's God's will for you to come out of that pit today. It's God's will for the paradigm of your life to shift and change. But you have to understand you don't need to go looking for Reuben. You don't need to go looking for Reuben. You don't need to go blame Reuben. You don't need to go get revenge on Reuben because Reuben won't get you out of the pit. Finding him, punishing him will not. Remember my text in Genesis 50? But as for you, you... you, you, you you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. You know, I'm not just going to pray about this for you. I'm not just preaching this for you. I want to I want to declare something to you. You need to have faith in God's promises. He does not want you to stay in the pit you're in. If you will trust in the power of his word and under the unction and authority of the Holy Ghost, if you will listen, you're coming out of your pit. 
I don't care what Reuben did. I don't care what anybody else said. Yeah. God gave him those dreams. Joseph was coming out of that pit. Mm. So the problem isn't Reuben. The problem isn't the pit. The problem or the greatest issue is what's going on inside of you, not around you. Your most important focus is what's going on inside of you and what's, ha and then what's happening to you. You can't happen. If it's a hot day, I, I, I can't change it being a hot day. I can turn on the air conditioning. <laughs> Hear me, listen. We get to thinking we'll find a way out or our way to victory. And we think we know what victory looks like. And that's where we have a problem. How many thinks you know what victory looks like? We all do. In fact, remember the rich man? He thought he knew the way to victory. How about Lazarus? <laughs> the rich guy thought he knew. The rich guy full of ego and pride. He knew what to do. Thank God, I'm in hell. I'm in a pit. Send Lazarus. Listen, I'm going to give you, this is, this is so free. This is free. I'll set you free. God doesn't resist those in trouble. God doesn't resist those who are hurt. God doesn't resist the bruised or the broken. God doesn't resist those struggling with even addictions, with issues. I'm here to tell somebody, I don't, it don't matter what your problem is, God ain't going to resist you. If you came here with problems, you're in the right place. If you came here with pits in your life and broke, you're in the right place. Now, if you want to... I, 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 I've got to cover this because there are people God resists. Matthew 9 tells us, and it came to pass as Jesus sat at me in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, he said unto his disciples, why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that be home need not a physician, but they that are sick. Jesus gave us an insight as to his viewpoint of humanity. He's looking for those who want him. Those of you thinking about relationship, look, if they don't want you, I don't care how much you love them, get out. Stop playing. Stop. Look, it's, it's fact. Anybody ever been married and then not? And two most dangerous things that don't work out a lot of times is intention and potential. But she's going to be a great. If they don't love you, it don't matter. Jesus let us in on a point of view. He's looking for those who want him and who desire him. Those of you that sit here, this is going to get sensitive. And you're all saved and you don't really need Jesus. You got it all together. You're intellectually smart. You got a great job and a great career. You got what? You got everything that you, I really don't need to get. I'm saved. I don't need Jesus every day. <laughs> Anybody that's married here not want to be needed every day? I don't really need to pray. Next time I have a need, since I got everything, I, I'll, I'll talk to Jesus later. I, I don't really need to praise and worship. I don't need to be passionate about this like all those other low lives. I know some of you, I, I'm a low life. I need prayer and I need praise and I need to find that place in God. I weep and I cry and I, I'm studying on a Saturday and I'm praying and I'm weeping and uh, every day. I know some of you are so intellectual. And you got it all figured out, and you don't understand why people get emotional or demonstrative. Preach it. Come on. You got it all together, so you don't feel like other people feel. But James says, but he giveth more grace. He didn't stop there. 
Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. I need some grace today. But he did say, I, he says straight out, God resists the proud. Look, if coming to church and stepping up to an altar and seeking God seriously and praying and worshiping and singing is not important to you or valuable to you or desirable, then God's not going to bother you. Don't, don't, don't ask him for the gift of the Holy Ghost just because you want to check off a list of speaking in tongues. You're, you're lying. That's like someone, that's like dating someone on the weekend. Just try to, well, but you got other plans. But if you're here today, and you're in a place of a need, and, 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 and you need a life physician, and you want to, a, a great physician in Jesus, and you want out of the pits and the problems of life, and that you, you want things to change that have been wrong for so long, he's here looking for those who want him. He, he's here looking for you. He, he came here today to try to find someone to give that more grace to. Now, not, not the proud who are just sitting there. I really don't need you, Jesus. I just come to church because it's the right thing to do. Understand the reality. No matter who you are or where you think you are, we're all in the pit called sin. The psalmist called it out when he talked about the miry clay. We all need Jesus to get out of that pit. The problem is we're so satisfied with our clay. And you have got to get outside, get out completely, your mind, your body, and your spirit out of the pit. It's just, listen, this may get too detailed, but if you just want to show Reuben or whoever you blame or whatever you blame that you got out of your pit, if that's your life focus, you missed the point. Right, if all Joseph wanted to do was run around and find Reuben and say, look, I'm not in there. You may have been out of the pit, but you're still where the pit is. If Joseph's focus was so much on showing everybody he got out, then Joseph never would have made it further. If he would have just, if, if, if he was more consumed about, about fulfilling his dreams and letting people know. If proving to everyone else your dreams are real, then you've wasted your dream. If all you're doing is posting on Facebook what's going on today and you have no goals for tomorrow and your biggest thing is, that, oh, I got it, but you don't, ah, uh, you want people to see a temporary success, not a complete one. If that's where you're at, then you probably failed. Oh, are you hearing me? If having the image of what, or wanting people to think you're successful is all you're wanting, then you'll probably never really get there. If you're more concerned about letting everybody know you've got a potential of a great job or a potential of a great spouse, you look good with the potential of it. You look good from the social standing of it. People think you're successful because you're just creating the image, but you're really not getting out of the pit. Can I go old school for just a minute? But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. He's resisting. The Lord seeth not as man seeth. For a man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. The real issue is how's your heart today? Who cares about the pit? How's your heart? That's where your treasure is. God called you out to stand on mountains, not people. If your greatest success is your life is just a little bit better than somebody else's, then your life is just a little bit better than somebody else's. And you're standing on people when God created you to stand on mountains. That's right. That's right. That. Oh, no. I let the cat out of the bag this morning. I, I kind of, maybe that was too painful for somebody. If, if your go-to thought is how people look at you or perceive you, then you've missed life. What good is being the rich man 
if the instant you're on the other side, you're the one begging. Uh, the rich man had bigger barns and he had everything he could want. And God said, you're a fool. And then when the rich man died, he said, send the beggar to tell that beggar, the beggar's with me. <laughs> I'd rather be a beggar here. Yeah. And beg that. <laughs> you see, you see, see, you you could be look like success to everybody on the planet. But if God looks at you as a failure, does it really matter? You're, you're, let me get back to this. Quit living a life that you think are as impressive to people. I'm getting you off the hook here. Quit worrying about what other people think about your life. We're all in different chapters. I've been sick. Told to go home and die. Broke. So some of you think me preaching this is I'm disconnected. I don't understand you. No. Not only do I understand you, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to stay there. God is no respecter of persons. And if you get over the pit and get over whatever excuse, you were shoved, pushed, you fell. Well, if you'll just forget about all that and say, here I am, Lord. I'm ready to get out and do whatever you have for me. That pit ain't the problem. The pit's not a big deal. I, I'm gonna say, and I, I, I don't like necessarily singling people out, but 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 Sister Peaches over there, it was a row of children that would have every reason to turn around and look at us and go, they don't have to achieve. But every one of us says, but you know, we're gonna help you. And we love you. You are gonna achieve. The fact that she does what she does. When you look at the schoolers sitting right there, you realize what they're saying is that don't matter how the world did you in the beginning. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. And I turn around and I see that kind of stuff. And I see some of you sitting here. I'm telling you, the devil's a liar. The world's a liar. But God has got something greater for you if you want to get out of that pit. Say goodbye to the pit. Say, don't look for Reuben. I don't care. I don't even know how to say this. I don't know how to say, say this. I really don't. I'm by no means perfect, and I by no means wish ill will on anybody. I, I thank God for his grace and his mercy, and, and, and no doubt I have been the bane of somebody else's existence. I have been what they consider probably the worst thing on the planet. I'm pretty sure there's someone out there that's willing to say whatever. But don't we all have that we could say? Mm -hmm. years ago I'm standing there with my children I've gone through a horrible divorce I, I literally almost took my own life I'm not proud of that fact but when you work as hard as I work to do and to be what I was to come from what I came from it made humanistic sense of why go on But what woke me up was I'm standing there with my two children who chose to stay with me. And they wanted to hand me the phone. I said, who is it? It was their mother. What? Why does she want to talk to me? I didn't know if I wanted to take the call. I said, okay. Hello? I start getting all these questions. I almost felt like I was married again. <laughs> what? what is this? What do you? 
And so she starts asking me about my personal private life because my children told her, well, dad's got a lady calling him. This is two years after. Now, hold on. I thought I ain't never getting married again. <laughs> Nothing against you ladies. You guys are absolutely awesome. I just didn't trust me. I just not a good picker. <laughs> I was the I'm better. I'm better at the nose gold than the women. Yeah. Some of you will get that. I, I said, no, I will never. I, I preacher calling me, inviting me to come. I had one preacher invite me. I couldn't preach for him. Next thing, he, he's a young guy, young guy. He was trying to hook me up with his mom. I cornered him in his office. I said, I was going to give him the Fred Sanford. I can put this across your lips. <laughs> Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about because you're young. Praise God. But I was raised in that. Uh, <laughs> I was scared of that, so she starts asking me all these questions. And I'm getting to a point here. So she starts, I said, well, yeah. She, freaking, she started crying. I mean, crying. I don't mean no ill will here. I tried to help you with something. She was like Reuben. She was crying because I didn't stay down. Now, 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 let me tell you how bad this is. She was already on her second or third in two years. No, I'm not. No, I'm gonna tell you something right here, right now. That was an amazing lady, or I never would have married her. And I won't talk about bad about her right now. I'm just telling you a situation, and I, I won't talk about her to, her to her her children, and I won't let anybody else. Everybody has a right to make their own decisions. But you better make yours too. You hear what I'm saying? And I was like, I'd had enough. You go your way, I'm gonna go mine. Kids chose to stay. You, you do your thing. I, no hate, no. It, no you, you can't do that and live here. You can't go get go get your act together. I mean, I waited almost eight years. She's crying because I moved on. Maybe some of you need to get that pit crying. Yes. Maybe some of you need to turn around and tell that pit or tell Reuben or whatever it is. that You ain't dragging me in this pit no more. I'm out. I'm out. I mean, you need to tell that drug, that addiction, that whatever you're smoking or that person. Ah, uh, I'm out. I'm gone. I'm leaving. Let me say it this way. Don't call me to fix your car no more. I ain't, uh, 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 I, I, I'm not only, I'm divorcing the situation. Too. I'm moving on. I'm stepping. I'm gone. I mean, no ill will. You should be able to yes. Yes. disagree agreeably. But God called you to be a helper, not a hater. Let me qualify this. You can get better. You don't have to be better. What's your focus? Pastor, press. I, got, I know people right now, they're amazing. But their whole life is focused on the past. They wasted the greatest years of ministry because all they focused on was the bitterness of how it didn't look how they wanted it to look. And so they missed how it look, looks right now. Where's your focus? What's your purpose? I, hey, if you, if you you can get out of that pit, if you'll get out of it. Are you still blaming people? Or are you going to be a blessing to people? Oh. Are you using people? Or can God use you to bless people? Are you... <clears throat> are you lev living to get or living to give? Oh, God. I don't know what your pit is. They come in all different shapes and sizes. I, I, I don't know what that pit is for you. But I, I, I want you to say right now by faith, weeping may endure for a night, but joy. I'm not staying here. 
There's a promise on the other side of this pit. I'm not camping here. I'm not parking here. God's got a plan. I'm getting up out of here. That morning, the word morning is the beginning of the day. It, it represents. <laughs> it, it, listen, it doesn't even represent the next day. It represents the day you get it right in your head and in your heart. You could be sitting here today and even standing and, and, and getting with me on this message. But until you get this in your heart and in your mind and change your life, you're going to be stuck in the pit. Reuben came back to the pit where he last saw Joseph. and Joseph wasn't there. It says in verse 20, and Reuben returned into the pit and behold, Joseph, listen to this, was not in the pit and who rent his clothes? One of your greatest victories is when your enemy expects to find you in the pit and you're gone. You left because you're not stuck. Did it hurt? Yes. But God can heal me. I'm, I'm not sitting here. I'm not going to blame you. I'm not, I'm not going to speak. You're not going to come back a year later and find me in the same pr place crying about how you did or what you did or what they did or how come this. I, uh, I'm going to move on from this. I'm going to carry on from if you're still wanting the haters to see you. You're still in the pit in your mind. You're trapped by the insignificant. Listen to me here. David didn't want anything from Saul. Listen to what I'm saying here. David wanted nothing from Saul. He didn't want his armor. He didn't want his weapons. He didn't want his stature. He, did, he, he didn't want any of his stuff. Saul tried to drag David into Saul's pit by connecting him with Saul's stuff. Stop. You don't need what somebody else has. God can deliver you for you. This is why you got to have a man of God in your life. You need a pastor. Stop decorating and dressing up your pit to make it look, yeah, we're good. Stop trying to make it a permanent place. Start saying, you know what, you know, this isn't all there is for me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're not getting it. Some of you buying drapes for your pit. You're dressing up a dangerous situation. You're dressing up a situation that is never going to work. Stop making the pit your place. If you want out, right? Reuben purposely came back to the pit looking to find Joseph. Joseph, as far as Reuben was concerned, was going to be found in the pit. Are you hearing me? But Joseph wasn't there. Do you realize Joseph didn't see the moment that Reuben had? Joseph did not go through what Reuben went through. <laughs> Reuben is looking and he didn't see him. Your enemy is looking and he doesn't see you. Reuben came to what he thought was your address. Ah. But he didn't know you already got a new one. They came looking for you. But they ain't got your new address because you moved on. You got to tell that pain. You got to tell that problem. You got to finally tell that situation. Get your address off me. I got some place to go. God didn't raise me up to stomp me down. He set me up on the high places. We're not to walk and stand on people. We're to walk up and stand on mountains. Start living low and start stepping up. Quit worrying and making sure the devil sees you get out. Trust me, he knows where you're at. 
<laughs> Making a dress change. Had some people been plaguing us for some time. Wanted to see this church die. Wanted to see us. Got mad because, you know, church, I'm going to hold a standard. I'm going to tell you if you're going to go to a job, you need to be the best worker right there. Is that, is that something wrong with that? I'm going to say, hey, if you're going to be a husband or wife, then you'd be the best one. That's a good standard. Is that okay? So if you're going to live life, you, you need to have a standard. So they didn't like the fact that I expected a high standard. They left. They still blow up my phone with a text now and then. I don't respond. You got my phone number. But what happened was funny just recently. How many knows that we moved? Yeah. We moved. We, 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 got a, we got a new real physical home address. And so they like to reach out every now and then, just let me know they're still there. Like, uh, we, we, we got a call from a delivery place the other day. Hey, we got a delivery for you, but we don't have the right address. That's right, you don't. See, some of you need to turn around and tell your enemy, and I ain't going to tell you. I don't want what they're sending. Keep it. I don't got to have it. I don't want to be connected to it. I'm out of that pit, and I ain't going back. You got to learn to tell something. Walk on. Move on. I'm going somewhere. God gave me dreams, promises. I'm going there. I'm not staying here. It's time to leave the pit behind. Time to leave the addiction behind. It's time to leave some of those issues behind. It's time to leave that language behind. It's time to get that music behind you. <laughs> Joseph had moved on and now Reuben stuck at the pit. Reuben's mind became a greater pit than what he threw Joseph in. Reuben rent his clothes. You, you ought to be given the, give the devil a fit. It'll be a benefit. Genesis 42 says, and that, they said one to another, we are very guilty concerning our brother and that he saw the, we saw the anguish of his soul. When he besought us and we would not hear, therefore is this distress Come upon us. Oh. Can, can, I, can I say it? Who's stressing now? <laughs> it's not whether you see that Reuben sees. It matters that you're out of the pit. Oh, no. I, I, maybe, maybe I'm not making it clear. There are some people that not only did they want to hurt you, they're walking around thinking they hurt you pretty good. They, they, they walk around with wanting credit that they put you in the pit you're in. So much so that they think they know where to look for you. They've even talked about your pitiful condition. They ain't never going to be nothing. They ain't never going to have that. They need us to throw them something here and there. They, we worked them over pretty good. Oh, we were so successful in hurting their lives, derailing their ministry, tearing up their future. I come to tell them, you're a liar. Ain't nothing can stop the plan of God. Nothing can stop the plan of God. Even when they're looking you dead in the eye with a grin on their face saying, yeah.
Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have to understand, I'm not here to glorify the pit. I'm here to try to point you to glorify God. It's bigger than any pit you may face. Pits and pain are not the big deal. Mm-mm-mm-mm. The true victory is found in being more concerned on how God sees you. There's a statement that was made. I wanted to preach about it, but I ain't got to it yet. And I'll just maybe give you a little prelude or blow it all together. There's a statement that was made about Jesus. And then they said, Nazareth, can anything good come from? Let's stand. I'm just going to wrap this up. I'm done. Who's hearing me right now? I'm, I'm done. Come, 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 come to the music. Find something. Some of you live right there in that pit. Ain't nothing good going to come from that. That's why they left you. They're looking for something better than. They want something better. They go find someone more anointed. Don't worry about the pit. Worry about a better destination. That, that, that job that lets you go, that's all right. You put me in a pit. Watch what God. Watch what God's fixing it. Mm. See, 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 don't curse. Don't curse the pit. Glorify God. Don't curse the problem. Glorify God. Don't curse the darkness. Light of light. I don't know. Joseph wasn't thinking about Reuben. Joseph was like, yeah, yesterday I was in a pit. Yesterday it looked like I was going to perish in the pit. Yesterday I even felt like I was going to die in that pit. Felt. But God, but God, but God had it. Mm. Your fall doesn't have to be fatal. The pit doesn't have to be the end. You don't have to be finished. Don't decorate the pit. You're not staying there. You see, I got to thinking about this. And I know I said I'm going to finish, but I got one more. Can you remember when that old boy that was in that pig pen, that he knew what it was like to be a dad's house? God is so blessed. I went and read that story. Sister Chris, I read that story a thousand times. Corey, I, I love the story of the prodigal. I preach it all the time. I love it. I, th- I think it's a picture of all of us. Brother Terry, I don't think he sent in a two weeks notice. I don't think he turned around to that employer that hired him to take care of those pigs and said, well, I better go ahead and honor this guy that's got me feeding these pigs and giving my two weeks. I'm going to stay in the pit two more weeks. You need to quit thinking you owe your pit anything. You don't owe your past. That's a lie. You don't owe your problem nothing. You don't owe that pain anything. You don't owe that sickness. You don't owe that addiction nothing. It was when he came to himself. I'm not mad at the guy that hired me. I'm not mad at the pigs. I'm not mad at the slop. I'm not even mad at the money I wasted. When he came to it, when he oh, if I take responsibility 
I can take action. And it says in Luke 15 and 20, three words, and he, one word, he arose. He climbed out of that pit he dug. He wasn't looking to put blame nowhere. And he started making his way back to dance. <laughs> oh, God's got a better plan than me. I don't care if you fail. I don't care if someone pushed you. I don't care if life placed you. You can get out of that pit and get to daddy's house.